I used to talk with a rabbi who was the president of the American Rabbinical Association back in the mid-60s. He lived in Newton, Massachusetts, and he was the president of all American rabbis. And I asked him once, Rabbi, tell me the truth. Was there a King Solomon and a King David? Was there an Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? And he says, understand this. The Bible is the greatest story ever told. It's just a story. It is a metaphor. It's trying to tell you something about a war between intellectual, spiritual enlightenment and human darkness and ignorance. That being the case, you need to understand that the first most ancient belief system in the world was that the greatest enemy that we as humans have ever faced on this earth was darkness. Put yourself back some 6,000 years ago. Mankind living on the great deserts of the world, when we don't have indoor plumbing, we don't have heat, and the animals came out at night looking to get something to eat. It gets cold and scary at night. Consequently, the sun was the greatest gift that the Creator could possibly give the people of the earth. When the sun came up, everything was peaceful. Man was in control again. So God's son was called the Prince of Peace. And the sun, of course, was the giver of life. So the idea was developed in Egypt that God's son, the light of the world, who is our risen savior, is giving his life so that you might live. When the sun came up in the morning, he was known as the newborn sun. His name was Horus. Today, we still say, that the sun comes up on the horizon, rising. This is where we get the word horizon. And the 12-step program goes back to Horus, because Horus walked across the sky in 12 steps. In the morning, he was Horus of the first step. Later, he was Horus of the second step. Today, we take the word Horus, H-O-R-U-S, and we turn it around and make it H-O-U-R-S, 12 hours. So God's sun, walked across the sky in 12 steps, and he left the world. And when he left the world, he left the world in the hands of the Prince of Darkness. The Prince of Darkness was called Set. One of the names in the ancient Greek for Horus was Iosis. You can interchange I's and J's. So you can interchange Iosis with Jesus or Jesus. Jesus is the sun. This is why we worship Christ on Sun Day. The sun has been used as a symbol of mankind's concept of deity. It's symbolizing spiritual and intellectual enlightenment. So consequently, everything that the Bible has Jesus saying and doing is what intellectual, spiritual enlightenment would do in sight in any given circumstances. Again, the sun was referred to as our risen savior. The sun keeps us alive and he's up there in heaven. What's another word for the sky? the heaven and he's the light of the world well of course what else lights the world again God's son walked across the sky in 12 steps and he left the world in the hands of the prince of darkness but he said he would come again and he does every morning 545 530 were told that just as you have seen him leave on a cloud, he will come back on a cloud. And that's true. Check it out every night and see if there is a cloud out there when the sun leaves, and most likely there will be a cloud in the sky when he comes back. The Bible also said he walked on water. 
go out at six o'clock in the evening, watch the sun go down on the Pacific and walk on water. We're told that God's son dies with a crown of thorns. A crown of thorns is nothing more than the sun rays. The concept is liberty and freedom is based on spiritual and intellectual enlightenment. This is why the Statue of Liberty has a crown of thorns. Crown of thorns are the light rays. We're told that 13 is an unlucky number. Why? Because it's based on Jesus and his chosen 12. This is why you have 12 jurors, because the 12 jurors in the court supposedly are there to bring the truth to light with the light of truth. Look in the Bible and see how many times you see 12. The 12 always represented the 12 houses of the Zodiac. This is why the Bible has Jesus saying the prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Look up the word kingdom and it is a root word for zodiac. So what the enlightened one was telling us is that the zodiological complication of the heavens is the kingdom of God. And those 12 constellations direct the affairs of mankind on the earth. We're told that Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. Another mistranslation. In the Greek, what Jesus was saying is quite simply, in my father's abode are many houses. Yeah, like 12 houses of the Zodiac. Now let me show you something. If you go down to the equator and look straight across into the east, when the sun comes up on the equator every day, there's a collection of stars right there. And it's the same stars for 2,160 years. That set of stars is a particular constellation. One time it was Taurus the bull, or the sun in the age of Taurus. So it was the golden calf. Remember, Moses comes down from the mountain, he sees the children of Israel worshiping the golden calf. Moses comes down to bring the new law, a new beginning, a whole new religion. And the next constellation moves in, which is Aries, the ram. And so consequently, the Jews today still blow the shofar or the ram's horn. The next constellation that the sun rises is in Pisces, the two fish. Now Jesus is called the great fisherman. He's God's son, the light of the world, who feeds his people with the two fish. We're living in the last days of the age of Pisces. What is the next age we're going into? Well, go to Luke 22.10. The apostles asked Jesus, now that you're leaving this world, where are we to go? He says, go into the city. You will see a man carrying a pitcher of water. Go into the house of the man with the water pitcher. Is this the house of Aquarius? because that's a symbol of Aquarius as a man carrying a pitcher of water. Understand, the constellation that begins summer is called Leo. So consequently, the sun is called the Lion King. So the Lion King is the sun in the constellation of Leo the Lion. Each day, from the first day of summer, it moves one degree southward every day. It hits the 90th degree, passing over the equator. Three months later, he enters into the fall, and now he's falling. He is halfway on his way to the southern hemisphere. 
you recall in the Bible when Jesus was going to be arrested, Judas went out and kissed him? Why? It says he went out to kiss Jesus to betray him. Judas represents the first month of fall, the constellation of Scorpio. Scorpio is the backbiter. Scorpions in the ancient world and in the Middle East have two stingers, one on top of the other. And when they sting you, the cut that they make on your skin looks just like human lips. So the ancient people said, when you got stung by a scorpion in the Middle East, you just got the kiss of death. So consequently, Scorpio gave God's son the kiss of death, and now he's going to fall. Three months later, 90 degrees more, and it finally ends up in the lowest part of the southern sky. For three days, once it reaches the lowest part, it's called the winter solstice. That's on December 22nd. The next day, December 23rd, it rises on that same degree. The following day on the 24th, rises on the same degree. So for three days, the sun is dead in his tomb. On December 25th, each year, the sun moves one degree northward. So therefore, it is born again. It is now beginning its annual journey back to the northern hemisphere. And we now are able to celebrate God's son's birthday on December 25th. And as it gets to that halfway point again, we call it spring. Because he was dead in winter. Everything's dead in winter in the northern hemisphere. Now he's coming back, so he's springing back to life. And the ancient peoples a thousand years before Hebrews ever existed celebrated the first week of spring and they called it the Passover. We say that God's son is resurrected. So Christians go out on the first week of spring and they have something called an Easter sunrise service. Well, of course, God's Son is risen. And once it reaches the northern hemisphere at the Passover, it's in the constellation in the ancient zodiac of Virgo. So he is born of a virgin. So now you have divided four ways. This is why you have four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The four Gospels are the four seasons. And consequently, when you drive by a church, you will always see a circle on the cross. Why? Because the cross is the cross of the zodiac. The circle is the sun. And the sun dies on the cross of the zodiac. That's a fact.